Hello and welcome to Match Days. Thank you for having us on. I'm Pippa Monique and I'm joined by the lovely Helen Lucas, where we're going to dive into the first week back of the WSL in 2023. And what an exciting week it was. Was you excited to have the WSL back? It was fantastic to have the WSL back. Very entertaining opening the second part of the season with yeah. full of action goals and lots of good football. And of course, a couple of new signings for some teams. We'll get into that, of course. Yeah. Um, let's start with the Aston Villa game. They um, had a very good win against Spurs. Aston Villa were at home. Um, and they had a new signing that we're all very familiar with. Some may call, yes. all may call, an Arsenal legend after 12 years at Arsenal Football Club. She's now joined Aston Villa, which I'm sure is to get more game time and minutes to potentially Definitely. get into the World Cup. Yeah. What do you think yeah. of signing to Aston Villa? Um, I think it's a good move for Jordan. Um, I think it's a shame for Arsenal to lose such a, a, you know, like a legend and a key player, you know. But I think it's an it's the right move for both at this moment in time, bearing in mind that Jordan does want to go to the World Cup if possible. And also she just wants to play football. She, you know, she wants to play for a few more years and she's competitive and you know she wants to be starting games she doesn't want to be just coming on and featuring so yeah i think it's a good move for her well it seems like a perfect move really because she's already got her debut as well as lucy stanford for new signing for aston villa right. her debut as well Both and debut I, in the first game that's, that's a great start when you're a new signing yeah and i actually think aston villa are very very strategic in these signings i think they're signings that can come in they're players that are familiar with each other they're very good friends you know, mm -hmm. off the field, they've played together for years for England. They know each other, the link up, the understanding, communication, it's all there. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's very, very clever business by Aston Villa. Aston Villa looking silently strong. They're both Stanford yeah. play, played the whole 90 minutes of the game. Jordan obviously subbed off in the last 20 to 30 minutes and um, went down during the game, but appeared to be fine injury wise. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but she also got booked in her first game. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway you know she she let them know she's arrived <laughs> what can i say it's a promising start for aston villa they've also started to win daily scoring and daily scored as well daily wow yeah Stop scoring in a minute yeah very very good very good start i mean you know we've we've watched her we know all about her you know i'm, I'm happy for her as well to see her you know scoring um yeah it's good to see she's now on nine goals and one assist so far. A uh, joint WSL top goal scorer alongside Bunny Khadija Shaw from yeah. uh, Man City. After all, she's will get on that man. She scored last night against yeah. West Ham. So they're battling out there for that top yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they want that golden boot. <laughs> right on top. Or could it be a surprise? Could it be someone else? But out of the two, who do you think Listen, will be? Mm, I think that's going to be a close call. Yeah. They're going to go for it all the way till the end. 100%. Yeah. Kirsty Langston, she assisted both the goals, by the way. Um, yeah. Jordan Nobbs yeah. dedicated her first game to June Mead, who is, I'm sure we all know, Beth Mead's mother who passed away recently from uh, ovarian cancer. So it's nice to see the solidarity in so many players and clubs. Yeah. Um, I think it that. speaks volumes for the unity within the game anyway. Um, they're all supporting, you know, I mean, cancer's one of those things that affects many people. So I think it's close to a lot of people within all the clubs. So it's nice to see they're all just supporting each other within the game and using it in a positive way, trying to find, you know, like the positive out of something not so positive. Yeah. I mean, let's touch on Spurs now, actually, because they also had a debut from a new sign-in, which is... Yeah, which, big player you know, for them. Did not expect to see happening. But actually, no, I did expect to see happening. But, um, you know, it's going to take, take some getting used to seeing her, so used to seeing her in the Chelsea Blue... Bethany England at Spurs on her debut. Yeah, breaking what? breaking records as well. Yeah. I believe that's the biggest transfer in the English transfer market in the women's game. So, you know, that's really yeah. a positive thing to see. 250,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From one the club to another. Ideal for her, so I guess she'd make... I mean, I don't know personal settings, but I'm sure she doesn't have to move home now, maybe. Maybe London. depends depends where London can be quite big depending on where you live. <laughs> she might not want an hour and a half 
commute across London because it can be awful in peak traffic. But yeah. make it, yeah. But as you saw, Bethany England scored on her debut as well. Yeah. For her, her career for England as well in the perfect and and a good signing also for Spurs. They need a goal scorer, and she's a proven pedigree. So very good business by Spurs. What out of the two teams? I mean, I can, I know who I think was the stronger side, but out of the two teams in that fixture, who did you think? I mean, obviously the result says, but like, who do you think was the stronger team in that fixture? I think Aston Villa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, they won to be fair, but yeah, they definitely dominated the game. I just think they dominated play, yeah. and I just think they look slightly more organised and a better balance throughout the team. Definitely. Well, let's get on to the next game. This was the big fixture at Emirates Stadium with a massive 40,000 plus fans in attendance. Of course, yeah. it's Arsenal v Chelsea. We love a derby. And it was a London we derby. We can get into this one. <laughs> we were there. I was there. <laughs> I was there too. It was Arsenal 1, Chelsea 1. What a game. Arsenal dominated. Yeah. Um, like, if not all of the game, actually. 80 minutes. Up to 80 minutes, I feel Arsenal should have easily have walked away with the three points. I think had the game have gone on for two hours, I think it just, <laughs> you, no, no, it, it would have changed because Chelsea upped their game. The substitutions made were, you know, they were very, very instrumental in Chelsea kind of coming back into the game and taking a point. So it was a point well earned, I believe, for Chelsea. Um, but then... I feel disappointed watching it for Arsenal not coming away with three points because I think they had enough chances within that game, especially in the first half. Yeah. They, they could have been three, four up. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there was a there was a few times where uh, the ball fell to Freedom Manum, um, also Lena Hurtig, and they could have just um, taken a strike, really. Yeah, but the ball around the box. I don't know if it's a tactic that Jonas has told them to do, or whether they just wasn't confident in shooting at that precise yeah. moment. There was definitely chances. Yeah. More in and, the and the chances we've seen them have before and put away quite easily, like Frida, I've seen her, you know, on several occasions make better choices in those positions. So I don't know. I mean, let's bear in mind it's the first game back as it was for Chelsea, you know, in the post-match interviews. Um, Ericsson said, you know, she felt they they did well to come away with a point. She didn't feel, you could see they hadn't played for a long time. And I think the same could be said for Arsenal. Maybe just that break, they're easing back into the matches again. So, you know, maybe that's why they didn't do better in converting those chances to kind of finish the game off and maybe the three points. Yeah, But it was a good positive like performance, I think, from an Arsenal perspective, I think they did, you know, they played fantastic. You know, they dominated the game for 83 minutes, pretty much. I know, I was, yeah. I was, people around me were like, where's Sam Kerr? Not obviously she was on the pitch, but it was like, yeah, she was, all she needs is one but, chance. Like, but Sam chance? did what Sam does. She just yeah. pops up. She can be completely not in the game and she'll just pop up from nowhere and just jump, out jump everyone and yeah. bang it into the goal. We mentioned on the top of the show about um, Jordan Nobbs. She was actually yeah. there. The yeah, I saw and, her, yeah. yeah. And Arsenal, it was a really nice touch where they honoured her um, yeah. for her time at Arsenal and gave her a really nice farewell, which which was really nice because it was in front of so many fans as well um, and what she yeah, deserves yeah. as well. That, Class. Um, Class. Yeah, she's classy. Um, we mentioned as well that some of the other teams and players were... Uh, dedicating their games to June Mead, the whole Arsenal team and Chelsea yeah. team wore black armbands in memory. Yeah. So that was really nice and classic. Yeah, well. that was very, very nice to see. Yeah, I mean, every, I felt being in the crowd, you know, like I, from an Arsenal perspective, as, you know, an Arsenal fan as well in the crowd, um, everyone was just in in the moment, they're supporting Beth. You know, I'd like to personally send my love and condolences to her and her family. And I could feel that around the stadium, you know, from both sets of fans as well. It was very, very nice to see. It was a heartfelt, definitely. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about the game. There's there's a few key moments, but the, the biggest one is the penalty decision. Was it a penalty? 
Right. So these situations in the game are open to interpretation. Sometimes. Well, more often than not, with VAR, without VAR, you know, why did we not have VAR? <laughs> Could we have better officials? Like, you know, these are yeah. discussions we can have on another day. But from my perspective, the initial first bit of contact, everyone was saying it wasn't a penalty. It depends how you you, you, you you watch the game. For me, the first bit of contact was outside the box. However, the player still was in control of the ball. She then carried the ball into the box when the second piece of contact was made. Therefore, it makes it a penalty. But again, it depends what game you watch and how you interpret the game. That was my view of it. So for me, it was a penalty. Fair enough. The penalty was given anyway. Um, and Captain yeah. Kinlittle stepped up to take it. And I don't think, I mean, I have seen her miss one actually, but it's very rare. Kim Little, you can always trust her to put a penalty away. Yeah. For me, Kim was my player of the match. I, I felt like I was watching that game. I was seeing how in control Arsenal were of most of the game. I was trying to look at why did this feel quite comfortable? You know, this is Chelsea they're playing. Like, why isn't it a little bit more competitive in areas? And for me, Kim was just there controlling, cleaning up, creating, stepping up, leading. You know, for me, she was fantastic yesterday. I mean, as she always is, she's such a yeah. good player, so consistent. You know, she was fantastic. Now, these two teams, these two clubs are two of the most successful clubs in WSL history. Um, in recent years, of course, Arsenal yeah. had their tradition. But these two clubs have been battling it out um, for the last few seasons, Chelsea being the more dominant, of course. Have they, in your opinion, done well or done enough in the transfer window to, you know, seal the deal and win the title? Because it's getting tough up there with the likes of Chelsea, Manchester United. Manchester Arsenal. United. Yeah. Whoa, when we get into that one, they okay, are... So Arsenal and Chelsea signings first. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, they're not really saying much about who they're going to bring in, but they did bring back one of their 19-year-olds um, from a Liverpool loan, uh, Charlotte Ward. Yeah. Um, but she wasn't in the match day squad. Uh, Leopold's back in training for maternity. That's nice. Uh, yeah. But not on the regular, so I'm sure she'll need a bit more time. Um, but Arsenal have signed Pelova, Paul, yeah. uh, D'Angelo, the new keeper that we met. Um, yeah. Yeah. No date so far, so what yeah, you I think um not really to be honest, it's a big game. It's very hard yeah. to just kind of bring in yeah, you know, so no, I wasn't surprised, but it was lovely, you know, to see the players all there, to see the, you know, to see them welcomed into their new homes. And I'm sure yeah. they'll all get their time in due course. Well it's not trans actually I'll add it's not transfer news, but it's good. You know, contract news or for Chelsea fans that so Sophie Ingle um, has yeah. signed an idea deal, so that's that's great for them. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showing her commitment and it's good. I, I just think it's there's a lot of good things about the WSL at the moment. So I just think it's just growing and everything's so positive and we're building momentum. There's competition. It's not just one team dominating like it did, you know, for years, be it Arsenal, be it Chelsea, you know, whoever, like there's a lot more competition because right now it could go either way. You couldn't really call it. I mean, obviously the obvious are there, but you know, a couple of games you drop, you know, you just draw a couple of games, you, you know, the unexpected defeat and it could be anyone's, to take so that, that result, good. that one run result is possibly a perfect result for Manchester United. But let's uh, let's talk about. I'm going to talk about Manchester United first because honestly, yeah. six goals in the first game back against Liverpool. I mean, we all know traditionally in the Premier League how big of a fixture that is, but of course, yeah, it doesn't have right. the same. Um, yeah. rival. But honestly, just on paper, anyway, to have uh, that many goals in such a fixture is insane. Yeah, it is. I, I just think Man United at the moment, <laughs> they must be thinking, well, we've got one eye on this. You know, they, they're they just bulldozing over. They're turning up and they're taking points pretty much and wherever they go. <laughs> 24 goal difference in the league. So they're four higher than Arsenal, putting them second in the league. Yeah. I'll, I'll run you through some of the goals. So it was a quick start. Garcia made uh, it 1-0 in six minutes. Uh, yeah. 24 Alessia Russo, 
with uh, Ella Toon assist. Love that little link up there. Yeah, so they link up the ways, yeah. Hayley Ladd, 3-0 with, uh, with on a battle, second assist of the game. Uh, brilliant start to WSL, 3-0 at halftime. Katie Zellen was booked for Manchester United. There was a lot going on, so I'm going to rush through this. Katie Zellen was booked yeah. to, um, for Manchester United. Jen Bonner, who just signed back at Old Club Liverpool, gets booked in her debut. Um, said, um, yeah. I'm so glad. And then an own goal. There, there was even an own goal, wasn't there, in the game? Was it the fourth? I think the fourth goal was an own goal. It was just a lot going on. There was just lots going on. Um, Thomas scored the fifth goal. Again, another assist from Toon. Ella yeah. Toon. I mean, Ella, Ella, listen, Ella is such a good player. I mean, yeah. we saw what she did in the Euros. Like, she just tears teams apart when she's on, on her game. So, yeah, very, very good game. Strong, strong performance. Really strong start to the WSL from Man United in this second part of the season, I'd say, in 2023. So, overall, now, Toon um, and on a battle, both on two assists in that game. And Lad, hey, Lad, on one assist and one goal. Can you even keep up with all these stats? All I know is six goals went in. Yeah. And live suffering. Yeah, literally. <laughs> How there wasn't you... much to say for Liverpool, really, in that game. Oh, I mean... How, how do you deal with that big of a loss as a manager? First game back, I know everyone probably yeah. swing of things, but still... I guess as a manager, you just say, look, we haven't played for a long time. Let's regroup, get back to the drawing board, we go again. I mean, yeah. you know, they're going to have to observe where it went wrong for them and build from there. Like you said... Manchester United are creeping up there and doing everything, doing everything right. Um, I think I mentioned you know, this at some part at the beginning of the season when they were getting these results that you know they could get a Champions League spot, and people said no, they'll yeah. fall off. Probably no, City no, or can't. you cannot can't sleep on them. No, because definitely you know, do not sleep on them. You yeah. think they can do it? Even? Listen. Injuries permitting, who knows what can happen in the season. I, th I feel like Arsenal have been very, very unfortunate this season with injuries. You know, to lose two of your crucial attacking outfield players for any team, you're going to feel it. I feel like we're, Arsenal are doing fantastic to kind of stay up there. So, you know, if United can stay injury free to their key players, it's looking good for them. It is looking very good for them. Very good. Um, Liverpool had a few new good sign-ins. Uh, Lundegaard, 20-year-old centre midfield. Jem Bonner's back, of course. Uh, they've got yeah. Fukuna Gard, three-year-old midfielder, but she didn't make a debut yet. Um, Jem started and Lundegaard was subbed on. So it's nice to see, because, you know, it's nice to see a lot of this new sign-ins are getting thrown straight into the mix. Because as a new player, you kind of just Lovely. want to get straight into the mix. Oh. You don't want to be when, you're winning, when you're winning, though, it's a lot easier to make those substitutions as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That is but, true. No, no, it's fantastic. It's very positive. <laughs> yes. Let's uh, move on to Everton Reading game. It was Everton three, Reading two. Um, a good game for Everton. They needed those three points. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, they got them. So yeah. they got so them. There was an early goal in this game. Yeah, there was. There was, yeah. Early goal, I think it was about ninth, tenth minute. So it got them off to a really good start. Um, Jess Park scored the second forever at 10, just before, yeah. half, I think, around half time or 30 minutes. Another good talking, young talent. How good of a player is Jess Parks? So what she's done this season so far for Everton, for such a young player, and having the chance to be called up to Serena Wigman's England squad for those international friendlies. She is definitely a player to watch out for the World Cup. She, I'm, I'm hoping she makes the cut for the yeah. World Cup. Yeah. Such a raw young talented player. I mean, the, the, the squad's already talented as it is. So it'll be hard to fit her in, but to have her as an option, one would be great because yeah. what she does for Everton is amazing. Everton have lost Geo, who's now gone back to Arsenal, mm -hmm. who was there on loan. So we'll have to wait and see how that affects their game now not mm. having her being such a key player for them. Yeah, that's true. But well, they're doing well so far. First game back, a win. Yeah. That's, that's a good start. That's a good start. All you want is the three points. Yeah. 
And I'm sure Brighton won it was three points, but instead they conceded three goals. Let's talk about that yeah. game. Just three, Brighton nil. This was a, a surprise result for me because um, for me on paper, in this fixture, Brighton should win this game. Um, Leicester have been struggling in, in the league. You know, they're newly promoted. Um, this So this is a massive win for them at home. And um, they signed the new 23-year-old um, Simpson and goalkeeper on loan from Bayern Leipzig. Um, the Leipzig goal started and Simpson didn't debut, but Whelan 1-0 and a Tierney assist. Um, and then a Tierney 2-0 with a Whelan assist. So they just helped each other out there. Um, it's, it's, and then Robertson got the third goal to make it 3-0. But I'm still just pleasantly surprised how Leicester managed to get such a good, convincing win over Brighton. Do you think they can like turn their season around now? Yeah, I think if you win matches and build momentum, all you can do is take that and keep going, ideally. So there's enough games left for them to be able to turn it around. It's just whether they can find that consistency when they come up against maybe more difficult opposition. So but positive start to... 2023 for Leicester. Should we be worried about Brighton? You know, of course, they're under new management now after Hope Powell um, stepping down. Yeah. It could be, could be a different dawn form. I don't know. It's still early days. Yeah. But I'm sure who used to coach, I hope it's pronounced, I pronounced his name correctly, by the way, he used to coach Bayern. Um, he's won the league with them twice. And he's come to Brighton. He's brought in four new players, a centre-back, uh, Bergs van and Morse, a centre-midfield, Stefanovic. Stefanovic. And Vissiali, uh, two defenders and two centre midfielders. One was having um, drama, let's say, with their old club. Uh, manager's treatment in America and came for free. But all debuts uh, with midfield subbing. Uh, the club might need more time, though, to get into rhythm, maybe. Because yeah. free now, the first game. With... Maybe it's yeah. because it's... you've brought in all these new signings, you throw them straight into the mixture. Um, and it hasn't obviously worked out how you planned because you've conceded three goals and lost the game. Yeah. I just think sometimes it, it you need a bit of time. It's hard to yeah. just come in and start a whole new rebuild project. So let's see. Let's see what, what they come up with over the next few matches and see how it unfolds. Yeah. The last game of the day with a nice 6.45 kickoff was West Ham v Manchester City. Um, this game... Didn't go the way I expected. I actually expected um, Manchester City to walk away with the win easily, but at half time it was still nil nil. Um, mm. We waited a long time for the deadlock to be broken, but of course, who else? None other than Bunny Khadija Shaw or Khadija Bunny Shaw uh, scored in the 50th minute uh, and makes her ninth goal in the WSL season this far. Still joint top um, for Rachel Daly. Um, West Ham's new signing, 22 uh, year old defender, didn't start, but she could be promising for them. West Ham didn't play badly at all. As, as I said, it was took 50 mm. minutes. But um, Man City got the all-important three points that they, that they de definitely mm. need at this point of the season. Yeah. Wasn't a lot to talk about in that game. <laughs> yeah, not, there wasn't much going on. There was no drama. Yeah. Was holiday, was yeah. just, just get the job done and get yeah. back out. Of yeah, London. just like a simple 1-0 win. <laughs> Move on, that kind of thing. But it'll that, be interesting to see, yeah, if they make any more sign-ins, maybe yeah. a transfer window. I mean, because yeah. they haven't announced any transfers, potentially some to come in after the losses they faced last season. Walsh, Bronze, Stanway, White, yeah. Jill Scott. You know, a lot yeah. of players have moved on. And so these it would be interesting. Players. Yeah, big, big players. Jill Scott. Yeah. Lucy Bronze, like these are George Stanway, Kira Walsh. These are literally like all of your key players, like the spine of Manchester City. Yeah. But oh, does it just tell you maybe what they already have within that squad that they've not really rushed out to bring anyone in? Or are they just quietly <laughs> picking their moments to go and pounce in the market? I don't know. There is a concern, though. I feel like when you lose so, so many big names, you need to get someone in. Even if it's just yeah. one, you need to get someone. Yeah. Because yeah. it's much too good. Yeah, it'll be know, interesting to see. Especially when you're kind of struggling to get a result away against West Ham. I know games are tough. But yeah. for Man City, who have but, been a dominant side in the league, but they've always come second best. They've always just nearly yeah. missed out. And 
they need something to get them over that edge. And it's and they it's getting harder and harder now as other teams are collecting points. Yeah. And also as other teams are getting stronger, build, yeah. building their squads and adding quality to their own squads. We'll keep an eye on this one. It'll be interesting to see what they do next in the transfer market. Some good news, though, some cute news for the girls, for the girls and the guys. Um, Jill Scott has been announced to be honoured at Manchester City v Arsenal at the Academy Stadium in a few weeks. So that is going to be a nice touch. Oh, lovely. She's our, our queen of the jungle. She's out here the whole yeah. career. Um, but yeah, that's going to be amazing. Um, I'm sure there'll be a nice turnout crowd at the Academy Stadium. I love the Academy Stadium. Um, so it'll be nice for her to be there and get honoured for the yeah. career she's had. Yeah, that'd be lovely. She's had a fantastic career. So it's nice to see her coming back again, continuing to support, yeah. you know, I'm guessing her first love of football <laughs> and giving back, you know. So it's nice. Um, you know, and I'm sure she's enjoying all the new doors that are opening to her outside of football, you know, who knows where she'll end up, what she'll end up even doing next. Because oh, she's become so like good. a um what do they call it like um a state like, like figure a household, almost like yeah a household, like a household named in general now like yeah like she's know, like a british you know like lovely little um oh, my, national, my, treasure, my, that's a national treasure that's yeah. exactly the word yeah. i was thinking i had such a long day yesterday it was like football from start yeah. to finish and I'm just literally half asleep today, so excuse me for that. But yeah, national treasure, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm, 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 I love seeing, you know, everyone kind of start out in one career path and watching them evolve and, you know, seeing where the road goes. Yeah, it's lovely. So yeah, it'd be nice to see Jill and see what else she does. Up until the World Cup even, because I feel like she'll be doing so much even for the World I Cup, she, I feel she'll be. She has to be involved in some way. You can't. Yeah. You can't let those people not be involved. Yeah. In you know, it's it's good. It's very positive to see. We'll see. Right. I want to end the show on a prediction. I know it's going to be hard to call, but I mean we might do this every week. But what's your prediction for top three in order for the WSL <laughs> season? Oh, I mean, if that's too difficult to answer, because it might you might not want to answer it as in an order. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> if it's too difficult to answer, who do you think is going to get top goal scorer then? Oh, top goal scorer. I think it could be the two battling it out at the moment. Which one will finish first? Oh, who's the stronger side, Villa or City? Who can provide more goals? I want to say don't City. Me, answers. Don't tell me. I don't even know right now. I feel like Manchester United could really, really surprise people. Yeah. Obviously, I'm talking with no sleep. <laughs> this is not a sort. You know I don't like to. I, I don't like to predict the future. <laughs> well, in case it comes true, if it comes true, just say. If I'm I'm last say point, Arsenal, then. <laughs> Right. All right, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna put it out to the universe. Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea. What? <laughs> Savage. Wow. Though. Could you imagine that? I mean, I can't see that. Being right. Listen, I'll leave it down to you Sorry, guys. Please. I do like Chelsea. It's not personal. <laughs> uh, please leave down in the comments below. However, you're watching. Who you think your top three will be? In. I want to know at this point in the season, and of course, we'll come back to this towards the end of the season but who actually would be... one minute i've changed my mind i don't want manchester united coming second why because i'm still sore about beth's injury and right. different yeah. things so yeah. <laughs> if it was down to me united ain't even getting in that top three <laughs> oh, well, they will, though. <laughs> no i'm joking yeah <laughs> are you gonna go arsenal chelsea united <sighs> yeah <laughs> All right, guys, let us know your predictions in the comments below. Get involved. Also, let us know who you think will be a top goal scorer. Will it still be joined at the end of the season or will one player run away with that golden boot? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining us on Match Days. I've been Pippa Monique. This has been Helen Lucas. Thank you so much for joining us. And 
we'll see you on the next one.